Hello my crafty friends, this is Monica from Also Petit. Welcome back to the skate bag video series. If you want to make the skate bag with me, then you will need to purchase the pattern on my website. The link can be found in the description box below. In the previous video, I covered how to assemble the pattern, which supplies are needed to make the skate bag, and how to prep all pieces. In this video, we will begin the project by sewing the cargo and zipper pockets in the lining. So let's get started. Take the internal zipper pocket and with right sides together, we're going to place it on top of the back lining piece. Make sure to use the piece with the pocket placement marking. If you haven't done so already, mark your midpoints, then take a ruler and measure 2.5 cm from the top edge. Center the internal zipper pocket against the ruler and pin it to the back lining. We are going to carefully stitch along the box but do not stitch at the beginning or the end, instead stitch over the first couple of stitches. Once you have stitched the box, take the ruler and the marking tool and draw a line in the center, stopping about 1 cm from each short side. Next, you're going to draw shorter lines towards each corner. Now we need to cut the pocket along those lines. To make sure I do not cut over the stitching line, I like to put a pin on each end, just at the corners. Now we can carefully cut along the lines going as close as possible to the stitching line at the corners. Remove the pins, then take the internal zipper pocket and pull it through the opening to the wrong side of the back lining piece. Smooth the seams around the opening. Then you can take it to the pressing station. Because I am working with waterproof canvas, I need to be very careful not to burn my fabric. First I press the seam allowance to one side from the right side of the fabric, because it is more safe. Then I flip the panel over to the wrong side and use a cotton cloth to protect the fabric and my iron. On the wrong side of the fabric you can draw a line 2 cm from the edge. Then apply double-sided tape, if like me you find it difficult to press your fabric. Otherwise, take it to the pressing station and bring the bottom edge towards the line, creating a 1 cm fold. This fold should be done on both pocket pieces. As you see, I already made a fold on this one. Put that aside for a minute and grab your number 3 zipper. Then apply some double-sided tape on both sides of the zipper. Not sure if you can see it clearly, but the tape has to be applied to the right side of the zipper, just at the edges. Take the back lining piece with your pocket opening and flip it so the right side is facing up. You need to take your zipper and at this point decide which way you want the zipper to open. From left to right or right to left. I like my zippers to open from left to right. When you decide, peel off the plastic cover and place the zipper from the wrong side inside the window. Make sure the zipper is centered. It is easier to line up the bottom edge first, then you can line up and adjust the top edge. When you are ready, top stitch around the window. Take the remaining internal zipper pocket and with right sides together place it on top. Line up the bottom folded edges, sides and the top, then you can pin it all around.
we are going to sew the side, top edge and the other side. It is easier if you fold the main lining piece onto itself to access the pocket to sew the seams without worrying that you're going to stitch the lining by accident. Take both cargo pocket pieces and with right sides together, place them on top of each other. Line them up on all sides and pin them together. We are going to sew the seams one centimeter from the edge around all four sides. However, we need to remember to leave an opening along the top edge so we can turn the cargo pocket right side out. You can trim the seam allowance by half, but leave the full seam allowance around the opening. Turn the cargo pocket right side out, then you can press all seams flat. When you are ready, top stitch the edge with the opening. Take a ruler and a marking pen and on the right side of the pocket mark a notch one centimeter from the edge. Then you're going to mark another notch one centimeter from the first notch and follow it with the third one. So you have three notches one centimeter apart. From the last notch measure nine centimeters and mark another notch. From that notch Mark two subsequent notches one centimeter apart. Just like that. Extend the last notch to the top because we're going to use it as a stitching line. On the right side of the front lining piece, draw a rectangle that is 24 centimeters wide and 16 centimeters tall. Make sure it is centered 8 cm down from the top edge. Then you can take your cargo pocket and place it inside the rectangle. As you can see, the pocket is bigger than the rectangle, but do not worry about it because it will fit once we create the cargo pocket. First, line up the right side of the pocket inside the rectangle and pin it in place. You're going to top stitch along the side pivot at the corner, stitch the bottom edge, pivot again at the last notch and sew on top of the stitching line. If you want, you can also stitch tiny triangles at the top to anchor the pocket. This is optional, but I like to add a woven label here. However, you can add it anywhere else in the lining. As you can see, we have created a small slip pocket. Now we are going to work on the other side and create a cargo pocket. To do this, we need to make pleats using those notches as a guide. Just as a reminder, you have notch one, two and three. 
and then four, five, and six. First, we are going to work on this group of notches. So you need to pinch the pocket at the notch four. Then we're going to bring the notch four towards the last notch. When we do, this makes another fold along the notch five. Then you can clip it in place. Let me show you how it looks like from this side. Not sure if that's just me, but the split reminds me of a zigzag. Next, we're going to make a similar pleat on this side, following those set of notches. First, pinch the pocket at notch 3, then you can bring that notch towards the notch 1, making a fold along notch 2 as we did on the other side. As you can see, we created another zigzag pleat. Before you pin this side, you can double check if the cargo pocket fits inside your rectangle. Adjust your pleats if necessary, then pin the pocket to the lining. When you are ready, we're going to stitch the pocket starting at the bottom edge, pivot at the corner and stitch along the other side. If you want, you can stitch a little triangle to anchor the pocket. Take one of the facing pieces and with right sides together, line it up at the top edge of the lining. Clip it in place, then you can sew the seam using 1 cm seam allowance. But first we can prep the other lining. You need to press the seam allowance towards the lining. When you finish pressing both seams, take the lining pieces to the machine and top stitch along the seam. That is all for this tutorial. In the next video, we will begin working on the exterior pieces of the Kate bag. We will make handles, strap connectors, and also the external zipper and slip pockets. Thank you for watching this video. See you next time. Stay crafty, friends.